talk about the next thing, which is the SCM cloud interfacing. So it's just, you know. So now, uh, you know, uh, if this is our Oracle SCM. So as I explained in the previous slide, so for inbound, we have STL and HSTL. Okay, so HSTL is nothing but the spreadsheet data loader, which is kind of, you know, uh, you can put the data into an Excel format and upload. Yeah, but in behind the scene, it's again a HCM data loader only. Okay. Then we have REST APIs. So REST APIs again, we can use to upload the data into Oracle HCM. So for the outbound integrations, right? So we have some out of the box uh, integrations which are delivered by Oracle. So for example, you know, we have an out of the box integration with Delio. We can utilize that, okay? Then we have HCM extracts, okay? So HCM extracts, like we have seen in the previous example, they are used to extract, transform, and format large complex data volumes, right? Then OTBI, yeah. So OTBI basically it's not a you know uh, integration tool. I would I would say it's more of a reporting tool, okay. But on the BIP, BIP can be used for reporting as well as for integrations, okay. Then we have something called BICC, which is BI Cloud uh, Connector Extract. So using which we can you know export the views into uh, a third party and use that. Then we have web services also available, you know, where we can call uh, SDL or SCM extract using SOAP uh, web services or REST as we have seen in the inbound system. Okay. So now, you know, because uh, Oracle HCM, it's a SaaS platform. So most of the customers uh, will be using it as a, uh, you know, software as a service. Yeah. So in those scenarios, we have certain uh, custom code challenges basically. So for anyone who is coming from a EBS background or you know uh, coming from an on-prem uh, application where you know they have full access to uh, the database, right? So they will feel a little, you know, uh, it, they will feel it a bit difficult to move to a SaaS solution because from the technical perspective, right? So there are lots of limitations which you know. Uh, you don't encounter in a on-prem uh, system, okay? So for example, if we are talking about the inbound integration, right? So there is no, you know, custom code support, okay? So we can't write any custom code. So for example, if we are migrating employee data from a, you know, legacy system, so we have to have, you know, that data formatted in a particular uh, file format. Then only we can load it into HCN. Otherwise, you know, we can't write a PL SQL package or, you know, play around with data on the HCM. okay? So then the second thing is, again, you know, if we have to get data into HCM, we either can use HDL or REST APIs only. So there is no third way of, you know, uh, inputting the data, yeah? Then, you know, we have, you know, some uh, privileges, I, I would say, you know, where we can use some, uh, tools like transformation pass formulas to transform some of the data which is coming, okay? But most of the data, it should be formatted at the source or we need to use a middleware like OIC to, you know, format the data and present it in the format which, you know, HCM will expect, okay? So on the outbound side, again, you know, we, we cannot write very, you know, complex custom logics, okay? So, like in EBS, okay, or other systems, we have a privilege where we can write custom functions to get some values and all, but that facility is not available in a SaaS product, yeah. So some custom logic we can uh, still accommodate using fast formulas, value sets, or we can handle at the BIP, you know, uh, template levels, okay. But uh, still, it's, you know, a major change uh, for, for an on-prem customer to a SaaS uh, Thing, okay, so we can't have you know complex stored procedures or the staging papers. Okay, so we have some solutions, custom payroll flows we can use. We can use uh, value sets, pass formulas to you know do some of the processing. Okay, so now uh, for today we will be focusing on HCM data loader. Yeah, so our next day tomorrow will also be on the HCM data loader only. So today we will be touching base on the work structures, data migration, seeing, you know, uh, the different scenarios we, which, you know, we can encounter. So those are, you know, uh, the hands-on exercises which we are going to do today. 
so they are uh, mostly the real life you know examples which i have taken from uh, the projects whatever i have uh, worked upon so far okay so uh, my expectation is you know if you are able to understand uh, those examples which we are going to do today for work structures right so you should be able to do any uh, kind of data migration in future yeah and tomorrow we will be focusing on more complex uh, data migration which is uh, for worker uh, object okay so we will see some use cases for worker and other you know uh, properties of the hcm data loader okay so now let us start with the basic introduction to hcm data loader so i'm not sure you know uh, what are your qualifications or how much you know about you know fusion hcm or fusion uh, as a product okay so hcm uh, human capital management right so it it provides as a tool which is called hdl hcm data loader to load you know to bulk migrate the data into hcm okay so the basic thing is so hcm data loader it's a flat file based bulk data loader utility so you have to have a you know data in a px uh, in a file just save it and then zip it and upload it okay so you can use sdl to do a one time uh, bulk migration full load or you can use it for your integrations as well for incremental loads okay so sdl supports multiple data sources yeah so you can migrate data from multiple sources for example let us say we have a customer who is using ebs as well as the force right for you know uh, managing their data for region wise right so you know the core hr data let us say is separate in both eps and the force right so using hdl we can you know load data from both eps as well as the force so you know uh, there is no issue so we can you know easily combine their data and get it into hcm okay so when we load and import and load the data into hcm so hdl perform some basic validations you know before loading the data so it's not you know uh, like we just you know put something rubbish in the file and upload it into hcm hdl will not load that so it will you know error out that data okay then we have support uh, for hdl for error correction okay so you know when we encounter any kind of uh, error scenarios so hdl you know gives us an option to extract that failed data so we can just extract only those failed lines we can fix the you know errors in the file and upload it again yeah then hdl supports you know the complex data objects with full data entry so let us take an example where you know an organization have been using uh, an on prem uh, data uh, on prem application for you know holding their data from last 20 years okay so if we need to migrate that full data history of 20 years yeah we can easily do so we we can store you know the pdf files you know excel documents you know for any uh, certificates which an employee have or the organization demands we can store it into hcm using uh, you know hdl okay then you know Uh, using hdl we can create objects we can update objects and for some of the objects we can even delete those objects okay so but not all the objects can be deleted using hdl then you know we can uh, upload the flex fields data using hdl okay so as we discussed in the previous slide so we can submit hdl using web services okay so then this encrypted data can be loaded so this is quite important you know in today's world where you know most of the customers they are uh, really you know thought of, thoughtful about the security of their data so hdl supports a mechanism where you know we can encrypt the data before loading so that you know no no one can read this data okay then you know uh, for uh, organizations which are you know spread across countries or you know they have uh, Uh, operations in different languages so hdl supports the translation for many objects so we can you know upload the translated data for many objects using hdl so now uh, let us see you know the terminology of uh, hcm data loader okay so when we talk about a file to be loaded in uh, using hdl okay so we have a concept load any file into hcm okay so we have a concept of business objects 
so business object is nothing but a set of specific information which is related to an scm object like you know job or grade or worker or a contact or from a payroll perspective we have elements right salaries okay so then a main business object can have child business object so for example a worker will have an employment uh, business object then it will have an assignment business object yeah and then uh, multiple other business objects okay so then each business object will have its own set of attributes so for example if we talk about job right so in job we will have job name the date when the job start uh, you know the set in which job sits okay then we have flex field attributes so for any object you know which supports uh, flex fields okay we can define flex field attributes and we can use those flex field in the hdl file so then comes the file discriminator okay so normally a hdl file okay so it's saved with a dot dat extension right and then the discriminator used is a uh, pipe okay then we have keys in the file okay so i'll talk uh, in detail about the keys in the next few slides okay so the next slide is about the business object structure okay so oracle scm business objects they follow a hierarchical order okay so it means the business object can have multiple child business objects in there so for example you see job right so job itself is a business object and it has got four child components in it so we can load the job information first then we can load you know the valid grades related to jobs okay we can relate some fields which are legislative uh, you know specific related to the jobs or we can have an you know extra information defined for job and we can load the job evaluations data yeah so all those you know four child objects they are non mandatory so wherever you see this dot right dot with a circle so this you know mentions like this business object is mandatory so the rest of ones where you don't see this dot they are all optional business objects so if your organization is using you can load those objects otherwise you can just skip those okay so then both parent and child business objects they have their own set of attributes or flex field attributes okay so the loading process follows a hierarchy so for example if you are you know tasked to lo load the job evaluations right so you can't load job evaluations directly unless the job is there okay so first you need to have the jobs in the system then only you can load job evaluation data okay then yeah the same thing okay so we have the parent uh, component we have parent attributes we have child component and then we have child component attribute so we will uh, you know see it on the application directly in some time okay now the next thing is to you know in order to get access to hcm data loader yeah you should have human capital management integration specialist role okay all right then a quick you know a uh, screenshot on how the data is loaded into the hcm using hdl right so the user have to prepare the source file in a predefined hdl format the user zips it and uploads it to the ucm so ucm is universal content manager on oracle side okay so any file which we load it will sit in the ucm first then from ucm you know uh, the scm data loader will pick the file yeah first it will import the data into the staging table okay so now when we do this process so there are two stages import and load so you know the import happens into the staging table okay so there can be issues while importing uh, the data into hcm as well so for example you have prepared a stl file where you know uh, you have given a attribute name which is not correct okay also the attribute names are uh, is sensitive so if you know you have given a uh, attribute name which is correct but you know it it has not follow the you know key sensitivity then it will error out at the import stage only okay but if the import is successful then the load will happen and scl will migrate the data from staging into application tables the final page tables okay so when doing the final load also there could be you know multiple issues yeah related to the data which we have in our hdl file so you know at that stage there are you know uh, the errors which happen we call them as load errors okay 
so for you know 100% success rate yeah we must you know resolve all the import and load errors yeah? unless that is done so you know uh, we cannot load our full file into hcm so yeah a similar diagram okay